Hello everyone and welcome to this exam tips video relevant to the advanced performance management ACC exams to be held in September 2018. I'm Vignesh Kumar from Phoenix Financial Training here to share a few thoughts on how you should be spending your final few hours or days before the exam, uh, preparing yourself and building your confidence. The structure for the advanced performance management exam is updated just like the other options with effect from September 2018. There will no longer be a choice. You will have to do all the three questions, 150 marker and 225 markers. The examiner has always indicated in the examiner's reports that question spotting is not at all desirable and there will be a conscious attempt to ensure that any trend noticed is broken. So essentially you need to ensure that you don't focus on an area but rather focus on your exam approach which is critical, more so critical on this paper than most others. For marks are awarded not for your knowledge but for the extent to which you are able to apply your understanding the con to the context of the scenario and to the company in the question. You have to integrate the information about the company given in the question to answer the very specific requirements. Uh, in terms of common topics that form a core part of advanced performance management, these are certain things that we can definitely prepare ourselves for, though we do not wish to question spot. These are questions that have historically been an integral part of the exam and a core part of management accounting. So what are these topics that you must ensure you're completely thorough with? And the best way to get thorough at something is just practicing a question or two from the past. Evaluation of the suitability of KPIs for a company, either within a framework or a model like the balance scorecard or in general, by comparing the KPIs or by uh, linking the KPIs to the objectives and the goals of the company has been a common question in the past. Similarly, assessment of reward systems, rewards that are given to individuals within a company, to check if it is suitable, to check if it meets conditions of a good reward system, may also figure out. Besides this, in the context of not-for-profit organizations, the concept of value for money, assessing effectiveness, economy and efficiency is another very commonly tested area. It is often easy to tag along a topic like league tables along with the assessment of the three E's. Besides this, the <clears throat> topic of risk and uncertainty has remained under examined in the recent past. You could be asked questions on evaluating a decision and coming up to a conclusion on whether you should, on what choice you should make between several choices available whenever there is a decision to take in the wake of risk and uncertainty. This typically manifests itself in the form of questions on maxi max, maxi min, mini max, regret, expected value. You are sometimes also asked questions on discussing expected value as a concept, the benefits and the drawbacks of, of using this as a technique for decision making. Besides this, uh, there are three performance measurement frameworks that may also figure up in the exam, either, uh, uh, either asking you to apply these frameworks to a question and come up with how you will measure performance or challenges associated with their implementation. Now, what are those frameworks? The balance scorecard, the building block model, and the performance pyramid. As I've mentioned, you may be asked to apply these models to, a, to the context of a scenario. You could be asked to evaluate whether the KPIs are covering all the aspects under these models. If you are talking of the building block model, are the reward schemes uh, meeting the uh, uh, desired criteria under the model, are the targets being set the right way. Uh, these are questions that you could be asked. Effectively applying these models to the context of a company's performance measurement system. 
it is not essential that a model comes up every time but this has been a, a, you know a, a consistent part of the exam in the past so the examiner does occasionally put in one of these models and you can often use these models to structure your answer although the evaluation of kpis can be done even without them you can still evaluate kpis in a question by using these headings using these frameworks to just build your answer around around it besides this uh, please also ensure you go through the lean and quality uh, concepts lean manufacturing and quality concepts that is things like jit kaizen costing tqm six sigma you should know what these topics are so in case there's a question for a few marks you should be able to first of all define and explain what this is and then address the very specific requirement please ensure you plan your answer very carefully bifurcate the different parts of the question before you start allocate time to each part of the question and identify how many marks you are writing for and then start your answer because then you have a clear plan of action you know exactly what you are going to say you don't end up doing unnecessary introductions and unnecessary comments on things that don't add value you write value added comments and exactly the number you need to score the marks that you are targeting so with all of this i presume the exam will go well and your results will be absolutely fantastic i wish you all the very best uh, happy studying over the next few days going into your exam